Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's episode I would like to talk about something that I've actually managed a few times in other videos but I've never really explained in detail and that is the VLS check. A check that has to be done before every single landing and in this video I would like to explain to you why it is important and why even in the sim you should be doing this check every single time you fly and approach. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, in order to understand the VLS check and why it is done, we need to discuss VLS, what it means, why it is there and how the Airbus calculates it and displays it to you. So, I've just taken off here in Zurich and we're gonna come back now for an approach and before we do so, let's just discuss VLS and see how all that comes together when we fly an ILS here back into Zurich. So, as I'm sure you are aware, every aircraft has its so-called stall speed. A speed that is so low that there is no longer enough wind traveling over the wings. The wings no longer produce enough lift and therefore the aircraft can no longer sustain flight. So we obviously never want to get anywhere near that speed and this is why Airbus has uh, created what is called VLS. VLS stands for Minimum Selectable Speed and is denoted by this orange line here. So the top of this line is VLS. So what does this mean VLS? Well VLS is essentially calculated through several factors or as a, as a long formula, you don't need to know this. Just remember in the 1G regime, so when you just fly level flight or on the approach, it's around about 1.13 times the stall speed. So the idea is that you do not go below this and even if you would, you still have a bit of a buffer to the actual stall speed, but generally you should never ever go below VLS. As a matter of fact, if you fly an approach with manual thrust and uh, the speed goes below this uh, orange line here, uh, at least at my company, that's an immediate go around. So in other words, this is a very important speed and you should not get anywhere near it. Now, if you go to the MCDU and you click on performance and you go all the way to approach, you will see VLS is also in here together with the approach speed. However, there's a big difference between this VLS and this VLS. So this VLS comes from the FMS, so it's pre-calculated through your input here in the MCDU. So it takes all the values you've given it, of which there's a lot, things like the wind, temperature, weight, flap setting, etc, etc, etc. It puts all those things together and calculates a VLS. The VLS shown to you up here, they come from a completely different source, the so-called flight augmentation computer. So again, there's a lot of stuff that is taken into account. All the stuff that's going on outside, the aircraft or continuously measures pressures, winds, etc. So, all I want you to know, this is based on what you've put into the MCDU and this is aerodynamically calculated. So, in other words, there could be a discrepancy between those two things. Maybe the wind is not quite what the airport said it would be or maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you put in a wrong value here. So, this is the first thing you need to know. This value of VLS and this value of VLS have two different sources and therefore there can be a discrepancy. And this is exactly what you need to check when you do your final approach. So why is this discrepancy important? Well, we don't want to get anywhere near VLS, as I said before. And the golden rule is you should always stay five knots above VLS when you fly an approach. So really, the managed speed or selected speed initially should always stay five knots above 
VLS. So if there's a discrepancy between what the aerodynamics give you and what the MCDU give you, maybe your approach speed is actually going to be too close to the VLS. And this is what you need to check because the approach speed of the aircraft takes the value from the MCDU and just adds five knots. But if the aerodynamically calculated VLS is higher, then you might only be two or three knots above VLS and that is not acceptable. Just a little hint here, five knots is the minimum, but you are allowed to go up to 15 knots above VLS for the approach. This could be done under certain circumstances, maybe you have a particular failure or of course if it's very gusty, turbulent with a lot of wind shear then VLS plus 15 makes sense because that will keep you further away from falling below VLS speed and give you a bit of a buffer. So that's what you do, that's essentially the idea and now I'm going to show you how to do it and what to do if the VLS is not correct. So we're just on short finals here onto runway 16. I've just paused the sim so I have a bit more time. Uh, the landing checklist has just popped up and so at this point you would say landing checklist, ICA memo, landing no blue. In the real world this is split between pilot flying and pilot monitoring but you're on your own. So essentially you check that everything here is green and there are no blue items and then the landing checklist is complete. The next thing straight after the landing checklist is the VLS check. So you come down here, you make sure you're on the performance page and you read out the VLS. VLS 132 and then you compare what it says up here. This pretty much looks like 132 to me, so that's fine. If there's a discrepancy between the VLS here and the VLS here, then you need to ensure that there's still plus five knots between those two values. This magenta triangle comes from down here and is based on this VLS, but this here is the aerodynamic VLS. So this is the VLS that is actually happening right now. So this is the master. So if for whatever reason this magenta triangle is much closer to the VLS, let's say, I don't know, let's just say this VLS here would not be 132, it would be 134. So you would say 132, 134, so we need two knots on top of the approach speed. So all you would have to do, you have the approach speed here, you put two knots on top, which is 139. And then you have the five knots. Again, this is the point where when it's really windy and gusty, you may want to add a bit more on top of the VLS. This is up to you as the pilot flying. As I said earlier, 15 knots is the absolute maximum you're allowed to do. So this is the VLS check, actually very simple. All you need to do is make sure you compare this VLS with this VLS and then make sure there's a five knot gap in between those two. And by comparing those two, you know exactly how many knots you need to change because there's always gonna be a five knot difference between those two uh, through the calculation. And that's basically it. So I can unfreeze the sim now and uh, let's see if the aircraft will recover. Yes. And then the VLS check is complete and you've done all the items and you can carry on with the landing. And that is already the end of the video. Very short one today, but I thought, um, I don't know, it's something we've never really discussed and I've mentioned it a few times now, not just a VLS check, but I don't think I've explained to you what that actually means. So I thought I'll make a quick video to explain to you why a VLS check is necessary, what it is and when to do it and how to correct the approach speed accordingly. So I hope you found it interesting. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best. Bye bye.